It's time for my NFL Divisional Round Betting Picks. Are you ready to crush the bookies this weekend? I'm Professor MJ, a former university statistics teacher for 15 years who quit his job in September 2022 to become a full-time sports better and advisor. I've also been beating online bookies since 1999. My number one objective is to help you to grow your bankroll. Before we get started, what will my weekly lobster bet be this week? Since I introduced this new concept for my highest confidence play of the week, we have owned a 5-1 record, including four very easy winners. Stick until the end of this video for details about my best wager among the four divisional round matchups. Here's my daddy, Professor MJ! Here's my daddy, Professor MJ! Alright, let's get started with the Texans vs Chiefs battle. In this game, my official pick is Houston plus 9 points or plus 8.5 depending on your bookie. Let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. Since they started existing in 2002, the Texans have reached the divisional round on 5 occasions. Their record in that round has been 0-5, including a memorable game where they blew a 24-0 lead against the Chiefs. Another element that scares me about this bet, which is another reason why it did not make it as my weekly lobster bet, is the fact that KC basically got two full weeks of rest. That is huge, and I don't think they will necessarily be rusty since they have plenty of veteran players. That being said, I am still backing the Texans with the large spread, and there are plenty of reasons supporting this pick. Sure, the Chiefs finished with an impressive 15-1 record, but they won by a margin of 9 points or more only 4 times. In fact, they only finished with the 11th best point differential in the entire league, which clearly shows how they don't blow out opponents as often as they did in prior years. Their offense is now built to sustain long drives. I also like the fact that both offensive tackle positions for the Chiefs have produced very poor play this season. Now they are about to face the best pass rushing duo in the NFL, Will Anderson and Daniel Hunter. Granted, Houston's offensive line is not much better. But what I'm saying is, the Chiefs won't be able to score at will, which will keep the score tight. And that's all we need in order to win our bet, right? These two clubs met back in week 16. In that game, the final stats were pretty even, but what killed the Texans were the two interceptions that led directly to 10 points. And yet, Houston lost by an 8-point margin, which would be enough to win our bet this week. Also, in that prior matchup, Houston was not prepared to play without Tank Dell, who suffered a devastating knee injury. After he exited the game, the Texans only mustered 38 yards of offense in one quarter and a half of play. QB CJ Stroud was clearly affected by the loss of his good friend. Houston's defense led the league in terms of completion percentage to opposing QBs. They also finished in fourth place for the most interceptions. Last week, they picked off Justin Herbert four times after he had thrown just three in the whole regular season, which is eye-popping. In short, Houston's stout pass defense will force Casey to run the ball often. That will milk the clock more quickly, and that will increase the chances of having a close game. I find it unlikely that the Chiefs will win by 10 points or more, so my final decision is to go with the Texans and the extra 9 points to cover the spread.
in the second game of the weekend. The top dogs from the NFC, the Lions, will host the Washington Commanders. Detroit is viewed as a 9.5 point favorite. Which team should we bet? Let's investigate. Last week, Jaden Daniels became the first rookie QB to win a playoff game on the road in 13 years. That was quite an accomplishment. Daniels looked calm and he carried his team on his shoulders, since the ground game did nothing to help him out. Indeed, if you remove Daniels' rushes, the rest of the team carried the ball 20 times for 46 yards, a meager 2.3 yards per carry average. Being a one-dimensional offense was not the end of the world against the Bucks, but it will be a big problem against the 15-2 Detroit Lions. One more source of concern for Washington is how they had some red zone hiccups last week. If you cannot finish drives with a touchdown against the Lions, you are doomed. Detroit also gets a huge advantage in terms of rest. They will be at home for the third straight week, while the Commanders are traveling for the third consecutive week. And, of course, the Lions had a bye last week. So, for all of these reasons, I think Detroit will win by a margin of 10 points or more. So, my final prediction is to back the Lions minus 9.5 points. I know Detroit's defense is very banged up, and that's one of the reasons why this is not the lobster bet. Their defense gave up the third most passing yards this year, but that is misleading. Their opponents were forced to throw often because of Detroit's high-octane offense. And when you dig deeper, you realize how Detroit's pass defense allowed the lowest QB rating in the entire league. To me, the Lions will take big advantage of the running game. Washington gave up the 5th highest yards per carry average, while Detroit has a solid ground game. So again, I am betting the Lions minus 9.5 points against the Commanders. Jaden Daniels had a nice run, but unfortunately, that's going to come to an end on Saturday night. The third game of the divisional round features the Rams traveling to Philadelphia to meet the Eagles. My weekly lobster bet, the highest confident play of the weekend, concerns this game. All I can tell you is that it concerns either the full game spread or the full game total. If you wish to crush your bookies, we've had close to 100 savvy sports bettors taking advantage of my lobster bet in each of the past six weeks. I am keeping the same two options as last week. Option number one, you get the lobster bet prediction in return for a $50 investment that comes with a money back guarantee if the pick loses. Or option number two, you gain exclusive access to this high confidence bet at a reduced price of 34 bucks without the corresponding guarantee. It's up to you to choose which option suits you best, but you are personally invited to join our large group of smart sports investors. The links to those two packages can be found below in the comments and the video's description. Let's move on to the much-anticipated game between the top two MVP candidates, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen. Who will prevail in this exciting game? After analyzing this game in details, I have decided to side with Buffalo to win straight up. Many betting experts like to remind us of the first meeting between these two squads. A crushing 35-10 victory by the Ravens in Baltimore in Week 4. In that game, the Ravens rushed for 271 yards, while Josh Allen only threw for 180 passing yards. However, did you know that three key pieces were missing on Buffalo's defense? Indeed, linebackers Matt Milano and Terrell Bernard did not suit up for this game, 
as well as standout Nicole Corner, Taron Johnson. Their presence this Sunday will make a strong difference. Also, the first meeting took place in Baltimore, while the rematch this weekend will be in Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. Do I need to remind you how the Bills have posted a perfect 9-0 record in that stadium this season? Meanwhile, the Ravens went 6-3 as the visiting club. Another underrated aspect of this game is the likely absence of wide receiver Zay Flowers. To me, he is by far Baltimore's best wide receiver. He has caught 74 passes, while the second best wideout, Rashad Bateman, only grabbed 45 balls. Not having Flowers was not a big deal last week in Pittsburgh, but he will be sorely missed this weekend. The game plan for Buffalo's defense is obvious. Stack the line of scrimmage and make Lamar beat you with his arm. I know he can be a good passer, but things won't be easy without Flowers. I have also read or heard many experts talking about Baltimore's defense improving a lot recently. They have given up an average of just 11.4 points per game during the course of their last five games. However, did you see the quality of the opposing offenses? They faced the Giants, the Browns, the Texans, and Pittsburgh twice. These teams all finished in 16th place or lower in terms of points scored this year. They are not comparable to Buffalo's offense at all. In my mind, Baltimore has faced a good offense on seven occasions. Here is the number of points allowed in those games. 27 against the Chiefs, 10 to the Bills, 38 versus Cincinnati, 23 against the Commanders, 31 in Tampa, 34 against the Bengals, and 24 versus the Eagles. If you do the math, it equates to an average of 26.7 points per game. I did not pick the Bills as my lobster bet for a few reasons. One of them is my worry that they may turn into a one-dimensional offense since Baltimore is the number one run defense in the league. Also, the Ravens get one extra day of rest after playing last Saturday, while the Bills were on the field last Sunday. Still, ultimately, I have decided to go with Buffalo to win this game outright. Right now, they are established as very tiny underdogs, but I think they will put it off and move on to the AFC Championship game next weekend. I hope you appreciated these NFL picks, and I invite you one last time to get a hold of my famous high confidence lobster bet. I will reveal to you my pick on the full game spread or total of the Rams-Eagles game. I am very excited about this bet and I'm looking to destroy the bookies for the sixth time in seven weeks. Follow the links below to get in the action. I'm Professor MJ, holder of a PhD in statistics, wishing you an awesome and lucrative weekend.